Hello everybody, it's Roxana with Past and Present Herbs and um, today I thought I would get on here and we would do a little bit of a presentation. Um, this is a little bit different than some of my other videos, um, but I thought we needed to switch something up this um, beginning of fall. This is September 1st. I wanted to talk about echinacea for quite a while now. <clears throat> echinacea is one of those favorite herbs of mine. Um, it can be used for a wide variety of things. I've used it for many years. Um, and so let's just get into it. And um, let's talk about echinacea, which is also commonly known as purple coneflower. I will be recording this. So, um, we can, um, use it later. Um, we can uh, replay it. I'm also going to be putting this on my website and, um, I'll have a link for that website at the end of this presentation. If you're somebody like me and you like to take notes, this will be a great way for you to learn about this plant, use this plant in a, in a, a lot of different ways and take notes on it and if you don't want to go get your pen and paper you can always go to my website and um, take notes and even start a notebook okay so let's go ahead and get started with purple coneflower I'm gonna be going in and out so don't freak out if you don't see me for a minute okay Um, first of all, it is a beautiful flower. It's great for the bees. Um, when um, you see just the leaves, they're narrow leaves. Um, it comes in a lot of different colors, but the bees just absolutely love it. Um, I've grown it in uh, two different colors. Well, three if I think about um, yellow. Um, but um, there's different shades of pink that it comes in and then yellow um, and it's even come in a fire uh, looking kind of red red as in the, the middle right there but the the petals can even come in red color which is a very beautiful it's very ornate in your garden and you can kind of um, get carried away with making it look ornamental but it is very medicinal and some people don't use it as a medicinal plant um, they just use it because it's a beautiful um, ornamental and some people a lot of people that i know they say yeah i think i mean just gardeners across you know the united states they absolutely grow them um the um the uh, the the potpourri uh, or potpourri, uh, they don't use them in any shape, form, or fashion for medicinal purposes at all. They just grow them because they are absolutely beautiful. So that's why I say, I mean, <laughs> you know, um, kind of is a little strange to me, but um, oh well, some people just love them because they're beautiful. Echinacea is a great herb for boosting the immune system. And it comes from the daisy family. There are about 10 species of them. And um, th that is why you'll see the different colors, the flowers. And they talk about um, the benefits. Um, and you may ask yourself, well, the pink one is the best. This one is the best. You know, there's a wide variety of different ones. But they're really all good. Um, Echinacea. Uh, this is what I say, potpourri, but it's not really potpourri. That's not how you pronounce it. It's a pure puri, and it has a reputation of being the best, but some herbalists say that that's not really. It's Augusta folia. This is really what I have found. A lot of people prefer that, but it's very hard to grow. It's very hard to find. And if you really talk about people overall in the herbalist world, 
they will say, you know, um, uh, which is best, the flowers, the stems, the, you know, the aerial parts or the roots. And, um, well, of course, we know the roots are the best. But I say whatever you can find, whatever you have, whatever, of course, you know, you can mix the flowers, the aerial parts, the leaves and the roots, all of it together. I've had very little roots and I've had mostly flowers and leaves. And I've gotten well off of the flowers and the leaves and very little roots. And I've had nothing. I've had no roots and I've had the flowers and the leaves and I've gotten well off of that. So I, th I think, um, and I've used Echinacea pulperia for, uh, for many, many years. And I've only had one time if I had an Augusta full, full, Augusta full, full area. And, and I've gotten, well, many times with, of course, in combination with other herbs, but I say just do the best that you can. Uh, don't stress yourself too much over it. But the parts of the plants are the flowers, the leaves, and yes, of course, the roots. You can use it fresh or dried. And, um, you know, we just got to do the best that we can with what we got. But... Um, This here is a picture of the roots. These are kind of small roots. It's best um, the first year of the plant, you don't want to touch the roots. They will not have enough medicinal properties. You want to wait at least for two to three years. Um, the second year, you can divide the plant. And when you divide the plant, of course, you're going to make more plants. In the third year, is you know where you're going to get the most medicinal properties when you go in there and that second year and you divide it and you're going to say okay this this plant right here is from the first year and then that plant right there that you are saying this is the third year plant then that one is the one at the at the time when you're going to dig it up and it's at the end of the of the of its of its year that's probably where you're going to get the best root and the, and the strongest and the best medicine the reason you divide them up is because you know you don't want to dig all your plants up at one time and so that's why i'm saying um you see at the very at the top there best fresh or dried because when you wash all that off and you chop them up and you put it in a jar you can dehydrate it or just let it dry out on a rack you know you don't want to leave it in the sun you just want it in a cool dry place but what you're doing is you're allowing it and you can let it dry out and then just um tincture it just like that you want a higher percentage of alcohol of course but um you really will get a stronger medicine that way. Okay. All right, let's get into the good part. All right, I hope this is where you can see it. I didn't know it was going to be that, that tiny. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing that myself. <laughs> um, but basically, um, the actions from Echinacea are the anti-inflammatory action. Anti-inflammatory, I really love, uh, like if you have a sore throat, I know it sounds like I got a sore throat, but um, I don't know if I got some anti-inflammatory stuff going on inside my throat, but I feel fine. I just woke up and I sounded this way. I may have some drainage going on that I don't know about. But the anti-inflammatory property of this is fantastic and the antibacterial the analgesic the antiviral the immune modulator and a modulator is something i really love working with because you don't ever like really know whether somebody has their immune system is down or their immune system is really high so you got a modulator i'll go in there 
and it'll either kick it up or kick it or level it. You know, it don't ever like kick it down, but it'll kind of level it. And that's really great about um, these kinds of herbs because, you know, if you're kind of down, you're feeling kind of down or you're just not really sure, you know, because you're kind of in between. It'll go in there and really boost, give you that boost, you know, that you're needing. That's why it's a stimulant. And that's another really good reason to not take it for such a long time because our immune systems may need a boost, but they don't want to be stimulated all the time. You know, it's just like, you know, when you drink a cup of coffee and, you know, you, you, you get that really good feeling and you think, oh, I'm going to go clean my house, you know, and I feel really good now. I can't clean my house. But you want to wind down and you want to take a break, you know. You don't want to be up and fired up all the time, you know. Because what happens if you're just totally with it all the time, you know. What if you're just uh, fired up on coffee all the time? You get exhausted and, you know, your nervous system can't handle it all the time, you know. You need to have a boost so that everything else in there can you know be supercharged and start in i want to say the word <laughs> i have to be careful what i'm saying right here um so your body can naturally do what it needs to do to and y'all know the word i'm trying to say here but i have to be careful because um even though this is going to go on my website and even though this is uh, but um there's been some new guidelines that have been put out, so I have to be careful what I'm saying. But anyway, your body can do what it needs to do naturally, and so I'm going to leave it at that. But um, our bodies just will do what it has to do, and um, so yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And so anyway... Um, but sometimes uh, uh, I'm sneezing. Uh, I think I need some. <laughs> so uh yeah, and so um these other um actions are um pretty self-explanatory. Uh the antibody production stimulates antibody production. Oh, excuse me. Um that is um something everybody needs i mean and the uh, the other one is kind of like for cancer and the other one is uh, i can't even read it it's too small i should i should put my other classes on <laughs> okay so we're going to move on to the next slide now why would you or me why would we want to take this herb well number one this is like one of my favorite herbs i have like a probably about 20 herbs that are my favorite. It used to be about 10 or 15. <laughs> now I've got about 20. But one of the main reasons is if you have a cough, a cold, a flu, sore throat, um, just one of the one of the first things you want to do is you want to make yourself a tea. And um sounds like I need to make me some tea. I've got some wheat tea here going on because I am trying to get this throat thing going. You want to make yourself a tea and the reason you want to make yourself a tea is because you can drink tea just about anywhere if you're working you're not feeling really good you can take yourself a tea bag and make yourself some tea in the office workplace in any type of workplace even i don't care where you work you can just put it in a little mug put it in a little thermos container and you uh, you know, sweeten it any way you want and before three or three or four cups and if you don't start feeling better then you know um you may need to add some other herbs with it or you know consult with your herbalist or your naturopath doctor because in three or four cups after a couple of days um of adding like i said some other herbs sometimes um, echinacea on its own like with some lemon and Sometimes I used to just do elderberry. I used to do echinacea, lemon. Um, you could put lime. 
and some honey, you should already start to feel better. I mean, um, there's some other things that I might add, um, you know, just, just to start feeling better. Um, if you have like a runny nose, if you have some other little things going on, I might put peppermint in there. If you're having the sniffles, I might put um, mullen. I might add mullen in there. Um, if you're congested and stuff like that, you know, because mullen and peppermint and echinacea are my go-to herbs. And um, I even made a tincture out of it. I have um, elderberry and echinacea tincture that I can carry with me. Um, sometimes when you got all that drainage going on, I have uh, cold and flu respiratory support. And I even got this on my website. Um, I've got one that's for that you can give to your children. But I've also got one that has um, peppermint, mullein, echinacea, and elderberry, a stragglers root. This is for adults. And I also have one without the astragalus root that, you know, that you can give to your kids. So I have that so that you can just continue to do the um, tinctures and also the teas. So I highly recommend those. Um, and sometimes you can tell when you're not really feeling good, you can do that. Those are really good combination herbs and tinctures that you can do. And sometimes the honey can really help coat your throat. And um, I even take some ginger and add ginger in with my tea sometimes. And um, I did that this morning. And um, sometimes just taking something that will just make you feel good. Um, and psychologically make you feel good. You know that that is, um, and kids love ginger. They love the taste. Um, it's a pungent herb. So if a kid doesn't like it, don't force it on them. That's what I always say. Don't force things on kids. But it's really good for bites, stings, and wounds. And I just wanted to back up real quick. Um, echinacea is a really good herb to not only doing a tincture but a glycerite you i mean it tastes really good um but there's certain herbs that don't um break down as a glycerite but it does have the necessary components to um, you can mix it like i said with peppermint um some children do like peppermint or spearmint but it does have the essential um oils with it to make a great glycerite and um so that way if your kids you know you don't want them to have a tincture um you can always make a glycerite um, for them for bites and stings and wounds it makes a great um you know you can powder it or you can just um mix a little bit of water with it and make it a compress and put it on your skin now if you have like a gaping wound like like it's really um gashed like it's really a lot i might be a little bit more cautious and put something that is um you know make a tea and clear the wound out with a tea and make sure it stays nice and rinsed before um you know because you you want to keep that area nice and clean and then put um, a layer of clean cloth down and then put your herbs down in there and then continue to rinse and keep that clean and repeat as necessary but always you want to have the advice of a naturopath or an herbalist and continue to take pictures and you just want to make sure you don't have any red streaks going up and just always keep um, consulting somebody that's a professional because you don't want that to get out of um, control. It's also really good for burns as well. And your eyes, um, like you can make a wash. Um, 
a couple of times a day. Um, I would start out with a weak solution and work my way up to a stronger solution because this is really good for washing your eyes out. I know calendula um, and I've used calendula the most, mixed it with a little bit. If you have a lot of um, what I call um, um, conjunctivitis or just some just major swelling around the eyes. I know I have that girl there with um, her little eye drop eye dropper bottle but you can get you one of those little um cups or you can get a wash rag and use your wash rag as um you can dip it down into a bowl that has your solution in it and squeeze the wash rag into your eye put your eye back and squeeze the drops from the wash rag down into your eye if you do not have a little cup the cup goes over your eye and you can wash your eye out several times. If you don't have like a little dropper, you know, like one of these little dropper bottles and you use the dropper bottle. Of course, you want a clean um, dropper bottle. But the whole idea is like you can put the wash rag over the eye and um, you can squeeze the drops into the eye. But if you don't have that, um, you know, you can certainly um, make do with what you got. And that's always my philosophy. Make do with what you got, but make it work. And that's one of the things that I always talk about is, um, you know, using calendula or um, chamomile. You can use chamomile. That's another great herb that I know a lot of women have, um, but chamomile does work or echinacea or you could use all three of them rotate it and see which one works the best okay um now i think i've already told you that i love this herb but here's a couple of um uh, why i love this herb but this herb is not only beautiful but it's in most of our gardens it's a western herb it's not so much um uh, air, um, can't say that word, but um, it's not a Chinese medicine. It's not Arionic or uh, Arionic Chinese uh, Indian herb. I'll just say Indian herb. It is mostly uh, primarily used in the Western botanical world. And I think, um, you know, back in the cowboy days, um, this was primarily used between the cowboys and the Indians is kind of how I view it. And um, for a lot of people, um, they view this as a safe herb. They view this as an herb that um, they, um, you know, it's, it's safe for children. Um, you know, it comes um, from the daisy family. So you do want to be careful. If your children are allergic to daisies, then you do want to, use some caution there um but it is used with like i said before mullein and peppermint and it seems to be um, that i learn more and more all the time about this great herb i really really enjoy i have enjoyed in the past working with it and i'm continuing to really enjoy working with it more and more so yes Let's go ahead, now that we have talked about some wonderful things, let's go ahead and talk about the drug in herb interactions, the side effects, and the contra interactions, which we always have to talk about that because um, there's not a whole lot out there. But however, um, we should always check with our doctors and we should um, respect all herbs and um echinacea has been reported to decrease decrease some medications um there is a small um i think they're called audio immune medications i'm not sure exactly what they all are i did look over them and i i think because autoimmune disorders are 
here and there and I didn't want to list all of them because I knew I might not get all of them and I just that's really just not my cup of tea so I thought I would leave the responsibility up to you and you can do your own research and you can check with your doctor I will say this I had um, been diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder and um, I was told not to eat certain foods. I was told not to do echinacea. And I was told to um, not do this, not do that. And I did exactly what they said. And lo and behold, um, I think they were right for a certain period of time. And then when I started to do some do some research and my body started changing. I'll say that my body started changing and um, my health started being restored. Okay. My health started being restored. Um, I went back and found that I could take echinacea. Okay. I'll say that. And so um, we are always changing our bodies chemistry is getting better um, if we do the right thing if we live a certain lifestyle and that's what happened to me my body because I started doing I started making changes I, I stopped doing certain things I started implementing a different lifestyle so echinacea became like I said I really I really just stopped using it for a very short period of time because my body had gone through a certain, I won't say illness, but I had gotten sick over something else. It really didn't have anything to do with echinacea. And um, so they just cautioned me and warned me not to take echinacea anymore. So I did that under the advice of my doctor. Then when I got better um, because of being sick, and then I restored my health. And then once I got better, I, I started using echinacea again. But that is not for everybody. Do I still have the autoimmune disorder? No, I do not. Am I still susceptible to some things? Absolutely. So everybody has to be, um, you know, checking with their doctor. And do they have to be careful? Yes. And so. I will just say that okay let's go to the side effects and the country um inter interactions um so when you take um, large doses of this herb you will begin to experience joint pain and echinacea it'll just say this is um it's great to take for small um like if you if you are I'll, i'm just gonna say this if you're sick all the time if you're a person who's sick all the time and there's something wrong with your immune system then you need to get your immune system lined out okay your immune system is messed up for a reason you may have some kind of illness and you need to work on getting your immune system straight. But echinacea will not help you with your immune system. Your immune system can go up or down. And if you're generally a well person, um, then you will be the type of person like I was. I had, um, I had a, a small problem. And I had to get my immune system under control. That's why I had to get off of echinacea. And I got my uh, immune system under control. And then I could get back on echinacea. And this is a perfect example. So what we do is we cannot rely on something like echinacea to keep our immune system in check all the time. That's what I was talk, trying to talk about earlier in the presentation that, you know, we keep our immune system uh, stimulated all the time or keep it boosted all the time. You know, echinacea is for short amount of time when we're sick. 
But if you're sick all the time, this is not the herb that you need to be taking. Okay, I think I've made myself clear. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Let's go up. Let's see. Now, this, oh, I just love that because it just shows such a beautiful uh, cup of tea. It's probably peppermint tea. But, okay. So, the very first sign of a cold or a cough or yucky, whatever, sign, symptom, you're not feeling good, grab you a hot cup of tea. If you don't like hot tea, you can always grab yourself a cold cup of tea. Like, I have a little bit of water in with my, I had the last bit of hot tea. I just poured it in there, and it's good, hot, cold, whatever you got. Excuse me, it's all good. Tea is the fastest way to get it into your body and to get things flushing, to get things going. You could do three to five cups of coffee, I mean, not coffee, um, tea, and get it flushing through your system. They say, you know, drink plenty of water, get things flushing, get things flushing. Well, that's my same version. I mean, it's, it's pretty much um, when you're drinking tea, um, Herbal tea is a great way to get things flushing through your system. Um, and whatever you can, and whenever you can, if you have to re revert to something um, a little bit stronger, by all means do it. If you, if you start feeling like you're getting a little bit better, um, sometimes, generally, mostly, <laughs> you say, well, I'm feeling better. Um, don't stop. Continue with whatever regimen or protocol that you're on. Because um, you may wake up the next morning and you say, well, I feel so much better. That's great. Um, continue drinking the tea for another day. Or, um, you know, I always tell people, don't go to the drugstore and buy a bunch of over-the-counter cough, cold, and flu symptoms that, that will kill your symptoms. Don't do that. Don't go to the store and buy all that stuff because number one, what you're going to do is you're masking your symptoms. And the reason you don't want to go buy a lot of stuff that's cough, cold, and flu, like Theraflu or um, Tylenol and, and all that stuff because number one, you're you're going to be masking your symptoms. You are given symptoms by God. And the reason you want to pay attention to your symptoms and you want to have a fever, okay, listen to me. <laughs> you want to have a fever because the fever is going to drive out whatever is inside of you, whether it's bacteria, whether it's viral, whatever it is. You really want that. You say, no, I need a Tylenol. I need to start feeling better now. I know. I used to think the same thing. But the tea will keep you liquidated. Liquidated will keep you hydrated. And, you know, we've just been lied to for so many centuries. And for so long. Um, We've been told to get rid of those feelings, get rid of how you feel, you know, these signs and symptoms that you feel bad. I'm sorry you feel bad. So take this and you'll start feeling better. And over the counter, all of that stuff, if you go on to, um, and even your kids, <clears throat> you know, because we have to get up and we have to go to work the next morning and we got to get up and we got to do this. If anything, over the last three years, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> if anything that we learned over the last three years, we were shut up and locked in and we had to slow down and we had to learn a great lesson. We should learn this, how to do something other than <laughs> You know this here okay 
learn something like an alternative natural and take care of your body um do something to take care of yourself and rest take some herbs learn to um cook something good and you know just if you get a fever there's something that you can do like take chamomile tea chamomile tea will help bring your fever down go get in a cool bath um, let it ride itself out nine times out of ten you're going to get better um you know people are so freaked out over every little thing and they get really scared don't get scared you know a lot of people hear things and they they get real panicked over things and this is not going to be my only video i'm going to continue to make videos i'm going to continue to stay um you know updated this is an antiviral this is a antibacterial herb so i really really want people to understand that you know by taking this two three times a day and even four times a day if you have to this is um going to nip it in the bud and i've got some other uh, resources here for you um these resources you might want to write them down and i've also got my um it's um http uh past present herbs.com or shop past present herbs.com and i'll leave that up there because i've also got mountain rose herbs pacific botanicals.com star west botanicals herb company.com and i say this all the time <clears throat> grow your own herbs strictly medicinal seeds you can get seeds now and if you can grow them in a bucket out in your balcony or in your house i know it's we're going into the fall but if you can start getting some seeds start buying a couple of packages it's not going to be long and there's seeds that you can start in the winter and i'm just a big advocate about growing your own herbs there's herbs that you can grow inside your house during the winter and then plant in the ground in the spring he's got books um um let me grab a book real quick i hadn't planned to do this i don't know if you can see this it says uh growing plant medicine growing plant medicine and growing plant medicine is by rico check rico check okay and that's 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 him right there and this is this is just full of uh his daughter illustrated it but it's full of different zones different plants how to you know garden in different areas and i've thoroughly enjoyed this book he's also got another book out there about um you know how to um make different plant medicine and you would thoroughly enjoy that as well um but yeah i never i never grow tired of uh reading his books but you are welcome to go on strictly medicinal seeds and um he has a website he's also on facebook rico check but you can um buy tinctures and i'm i haven't been on a website very long and i'm just now getting some help my um i'm very 
technologically not savvy. <laughs> so I'm just learning. But I'm so glad that um, I had this time to um, do this presentation. I will be doing another presentation, but it may not be for free. Um, and so, but it won't be that much. It will not be that much. It will probably be a uh, live presentation and I'll be recording it. And we'll be um, having people come on and do a uh, question and answer. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment and a question. I'll get on and I'll answer your questions. And I just want to be here to help you. Like if you have dosages, any kind of questions about dosages, this is safe for your children. Um, if your children get sick or anything like that, I would love to answer your questions about that. So anyway, I'm going to get ready to close this um, presentation. And um, echinacea is a great herb. So let me know if you use it. And let me know if there's anything that you can think of that I might need to improve on this presentation. I do welcome any feedback. This is my first live, or this is my first recorded presentation. I'm also going to see if there's something that I can improve on. So you guys have a blessed day. And I will see you in the next presentation and in the next video. All right. Bye for now.